Mr. K, uh, there's been quite a lot of questions about input and how input works and all of that. And so I thought I'd make this video just to help out, maybe explain some things, maybe clear up some misconceptions or maybe some understandings about this. And also to kind of help out with uh, the way Zybooks deals with input. So the first thing is we have this Madlib uh, lab 1.9.1. Uh, and this is what you start out with. Type your code here. You're just like, okay, I just gotta type some code. And then we got this going, right? And so what they want us to do is complete the program to read the needed values from input. And the existing output statements are gonna use those values to create a little short story or that sentence basically, right? And so they're showing you some input, Eric, Chipotle, 12 cars, and then they're showing you an example of the output. So pretty much we gotta understand input and output. And this was covered obviously in the sections beforehand, right? They didn't, this isn't section 1.1.1, right? It's section 1.9.1. So let's figure this out. So to really understand input, I'm over, gonna go over to PyCharm here. And I have a Python script, a Python file, it's called input and output.py. And I'm gonna do some input and output, okay? So before we talk about input, let's talk a little bit about variables. So if I have a variable like my var, okay, it's going to be equal to something. I'm gonna put something into my var and it kind of works right to left. So whatever happens on the right side slides over to the left and goes into my var, okay, with that underscore there. And so if I put a five here, now my var, that my var variable is equal to five, and five is stored inside the variable. So later on, if I use my var like this to print, right, it's going to print five, all right? So let me, um, let me run my script and we'll see. So I run it by just saying Python 3, or sometimes you say just Python. Um, so Python 3 input and output under uh, dot .py. And so we press enter and we'll see what happens. Five prints out, right? And I have my command prompt back, so that's telling me that my, my script is done, okay? And so we had five, prints out, let's move on. Now let's get some input. And the way we get input is we use the input function. So what happens is the script kind of goes and it gets to line two and it kind of, like I said, works from right to left and it's gonna get input. So it's gonna get an input first and what it will do is actually stop the script and wait for me, the user, to type in something. So it's gonna wait for me to type in something, and then whatever I type in, it puts inside of my var, and then it prints my var. So let's see what happens when I run it, okay? So notice, I didn't get my command prompt back like I did last time. If you didn't notice that, just rewind, check that out. But it's waiting for me to type in something. So I can type in hello, right? Uh, <laughs> two O's, there we go, hello. And if I press enter, it's going to finish the input, put whatever I type into my var, and then later it's gonna print my var. And so let's see what happens when I press enter. See, it printed a hello. It's a little confusing because there's a hello and a hello, but that first hello is the hello I typed in, and that second hello is the hello that the program printed out with print my var. And notice I'm back to my command prompt, which means my script finished. Pretty easy, right? Uh, but then we run into some problems sometimes uh, where I maybe want an integer, you know? So maybe I want to do like, um, multiplied equals my var times four. Okay, so whatever my var is, we're gonna multiply it times four and then put it into the multiplied variable. And then I wanna print out multiplied. I wanna see what that is, right? 
Um, or maybe even a better variable is like times four, right? Because that's exactly what it's doing. So I'm going to print out the times four. So let's see what happens. This is exciting. So I'm going to do this, but I'm going to be I'm going to do something I'm not supposed to do. I'm going to type in hello again. I like typing hello, right? And look what happens. It says hello, 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 because whatever comes in input is a string. It's text. It's not a number. Even if I it even if I want it to be a number, it's not going to be a number. And Python is a funny thing. If you do a, a text times four, it literally multiplies that text times four. It print it makes it happen four times, which is pretty funny. Um, so what I need to do is tell Python that my var is an integer. And the way I do it is I put int around the input. What's going to happen here is it's going to work right to left, like we said, but also inside to out. And so it's going to start with input first, get my input, then it's going to do int on it. And what it's going to try to do is turn that in input into an integer. Let's see what happens when I type hello again. Okay, sorry, my keyboard disconnected again. <laughs> um, okay, so here's the problem. It says value error invalid literal for int. Hello. The problem is, is it can't turn hello into an integer because it's not an integer. And so this is Python's way of telling you, you tried to turn something into an integer that wasn't an integer. So let me run the thing again, but I'm going to type in 21. That's an integer. And look, Python printed out 84, which is 21 times 4. So what it did is it got my input of 21, it turned it into an integer, and it 21 is an integer, so it succeeded. So now my var has 21 inside of it. And then it does 21 times 4, puts it into the times 4 variable, which is 84, right? And then it prints times 4, which again is 84. OK. One other interesting thing about print, too, is that print will also um, understand that the diff difference between kind of printing a variable and printing text. Notice it doesn't print out times four, like the actual times underscore four. It's printing out whatever's in times four because it's a variable. But if I print something like this, now what will happen is It actually prints out, um, or it's going to print out. It needs some input, right? It's stopping for input. It's going to print out 84, and then it printed out literally times underscore 4. Do you see that? And so it printed 84. That was our first print. And then it prints times 4 because I put it in quotes. I told it it was a string, OK? So this is input and output, and that's how it works within a Python script. But now let's see how it works within Zybox. And so we now have this thing to do. And so look at our variables it's using. Just like before we printed out times four, this is printing first name, and then it's actually adding text to all this business. So we need to put something in to first name. We need to put something in to generic location. And we need to put something in the whole number. But the funny thing is, even though it's a number, it's using whole number as a string, which is a little confusing. But it's treating it like a string because it's just printing it out. Um, so it doesn't need to do any math on it. Really just need them to be integers when they have math on them, in them, when you're trying to like calculate or whatever. OK, so these four variables, I need to put something inside of them. Now I can just put something there. I can put like first name Eric, but that's not what they told us. They said we needed values from input. And so we're literally just going to use input. And we're going to do that 
all four times. Okay, what that's going to do, just like it stopped one time for us, it's going to stop four times wanting input. And it's running a script just like before, main.py. Now one thing I want to show you real quick before I run this, there's a button, load default template. That allows you to revert back to, here I'm going to copy this real quick. It reverts back to what it started with. So if you're ever not sure what they start with, you can get back to it and you really don't want to change what they start with. You just want to add code to it or modify um, as needed. Later on they have like question marks. We gotta like put in something where the question marks are. So this is going to get input four times. Uh, just like before, this main.py is going to stop once, wait for me to type in a first name, then it's going to stop, wait for me to type in a generic location and a whole number and a plural noun. Here's the problem though. We're in Zybooks, and Zybooks can't stop and wait for you. So, I already put this in from before, but this says if your code requires input values, provide them here. So what we do is we kind of preload stuff, right? So Mr. K, and you separate each of those inputs, those four inputs, you press enter each time. It's almost like you're typing in the input ahead of time, and then it's going to give it to the thing uh, when when you the your script whenever it runs so generic location I'm just gonna say store uh, whole number twenty one and then plural noun cars right I'm typing in my four inputs for these four inputs up here because it's gonna stop and want something so I'm giving it ahead of time now notice we're in develop mode. So in develop mode, if I run the program, it just prints out whatever I type. I can change this to be like went to car dealership, which isn't very funny for um, a Mad Lib, right? Because it kind of like makes sense, except 21 seems kind of a lot. Um, you know, went to car dealership, you know, I could even maybe, I want to make it look right. So like the car dealership right? It's running my program and it's stopping and waiting for input. Now here's some stuff that can go wrong. What if I only put three things in? It wants four things. So I run program and I get this EOF when reading a line. This is kind of a weird thing because as the script's running it, it, didn't, it didn't get stuff. It wanted more input and it didn't get it. Um, now if I put too much input, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it just gets the first four things at once and then it ignores the rest of this. Okay? So this is run one time. It takes my script and runs it against this one input. And it looks pretty good. Like this is what I like, right? Like this is what I think it's supposed to be. Um, let's pretend I messed up though and I did, okay. you know, I, I deleted that B. Um, if, I, if I'm in develop mode and I run it, it's fine, but it doesn't look right. See, it's missing the B and by. But then if I get to submit mode, like, okay, I feel like this is pretty good. And by the way, you can submit for grading as many times as you want. You don't have to, you know, get it right the first time. So I'm going to submit for grading. And here's what happens. Zybook is trying out different inputs. It tried out this input, it tried out this input, and it tried out this input. And it ran my script three times. It essentially is doing develop mode three times. It's like run program, try something else, run program, try something else, run program. Now notice that when I go back to submit mode, it had a problem with Eric Chipotle and 12 cars. I can copy this input and I can go back to develop mode and paste it in and run it and see how it looks. But let me go back to submit mode. Let me see what was wrong. So it ran and it highlights the B. That B is missing. 
See, that's the problem. So you can go back and you can be like, okay, wait, let me put the B in there. And then let me submit it again. And now look at the output. And notice I get four out of four points, three out of three, three out of three. And then up here I get 10 out of 10. So it's perfect. So that's how input works. And that's what it's doing. It's running your script three times with three different inputs, just as if you would have put in three different inputs and run your script manually. It does it automatically. It just like reruns your script. So that's it. Uh, that's input. If you have any other questions, please just ask. Uh, come find me on Slack. It's a great place to get a hold of me. Uh, it's on my computer and my phone. And yeah, so that's it. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching this video. I am going to stop the video now. Thank you.